Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the 25 Days of Linux. Today I have a list of my top five favorite Linux apps. Uh, if I'm being honest, it's kind of shocking that I haven't done a video like this before. These are some of my favorite videos. I love watching other people's videos of like a list of tricks for a certain app or just a compilation of apps that they like. It's a good way to discover new apps that maybe you haven't heard about before. Uh, I know one of my favorite YouTubers, Snazzy Labs, whenever I was on macOS, used to do like macOS trick videos all the time. And those are some of my favorite videos to watch. They would just list cool tricks that I didn't know you could do. Not really tricks, they're functions of the operating system, but you know what I I mean to this day like just lists of top apps are some of my favorite because you know i mean a lot of times you'll hear of maybe even a majority of them but every once in a while you'll find something cool that you didn't know about so without any further ado let's jump right into the list uh the first app of which is uh right here running is almost always running in uh, my um sort of uh setup that i use uh and that is some sort of system management app the, the one that i personally have uh, started using more recently that i'm a big big fan of is bpy talk and uh, this is one of my favorites, uh, probably my favorite of these sort of class of apps, uh, because it does what you want it to do pretty much immediately here. Uh, breaks down uh, your CPU usage, so you can see here, um, my CPU utilization is at about 10%, and it lists the processes based on uh, the CPU utilization. So obviously right here, stuff that's using up a lot of uh, resources, you got stuff like OBS, uh, Pycom, really isn't using much. For some reason, uh, LightDM is <laughs> using up a decent amount of CPU usage. So one of the reasons why people don't like greeters. But the thing that I really, really like about BPY Top is the customization that comes with it. Almost all of these apps have customization. You can customize HTOP, you can customize them all. What I like about BPY Top is it does what I think more apps should do, and it sort of gives you the best of both worlds. Uh, so what I mean by that is if I were to hit escape here, I immediately get put into this option screen, and I can go through it actually with the mouse, uh, which I can't actually use M keys, I have to use the arrow keys if I wanna go through it with the keyboard, but I can come through it come over to options and you can sort of see what's going on here uh, i've got a few different color schemes i can go through uh, you can also turn on like a false background if you want to you can even change the uh the update time by default it updates every 200 milliseconds uh you can lower that as low as 100 milliseconds if you wanted to and obviously that'll take up a whole lot more of your cpu usage but if i take a look here now you can see things are kind of moving much more quickly i'm getting much more up-to-date information about how my system's running it's updating very very frequently obviously that's a bit more much you don't really need it and actually if we look we might even be able to see bpy top taking up more resources but no i can't because it's also a pretty lightweight app uh but anyways i'll go ahead and jack that back off and get to the main point that i wanted to get to which is the bpy top actually stores config files uh if i were to cd into my config there is a bpy top folder and if i take a look in here it's got a config uh, it also has an error log that it drops here too so that's kind of handy i'll just knock that out um and you can see if you come in here uh it's a config just like many of the other apps you would use it's very similar to the htop config any, any of those other apps configs you can copy this over uh if you find somebody else's config that you like you can come in here and manually edit things if i wanted to change the temperature to fahrenheit here that would be easy to do and next time i open up bpy top now all of a sudden my cpu pin temperatures are going to be displayed in fahrenheit instead of uh celsius which by the way looking at your cpu temp and Fahrenheit, if you're not on the metric system, really does put into context how fucking hot those things get. Uh, but you can easily change the config that way. This is great for a number of reasons, mainly because it makes it super easy to back up. If you're like me and your dot files are backed up and tracked, it's very easy to just pull them down on a new system, create a couple of links, and you're all good. You're using your configs on every system you use. But also it's super easy to come in here and edit things without having to get into the config. That's something that's amazing. Also just mouse support is something that a lot of command line apps aren't very good at, uh, but this app certainly is. You know, I can come in here and click on a specific process and get more info about it. If I say, oh man, OBS is using a lot of data here. I can break it down into more finite data about it. I can terminate it really easily. That's obviously not something I wanna do right now, but this is a great app. I like it a lot. And really the takeaway should be these systems System monitoring apps are way better on the command line, whether you're using Mac OS or Linux or BSD or anything. They're so much better on the command line. You can get, it seems like a lot more data much more quickly for some reason. There's not a ton of great GUI versions of these apps. And uh, this is my personal favorite, but if you've got one that you like better, Bash Top or something like that, obviously use that too. Uh, just even freaking HTOP is a really, really great app. Get yourself one of these.
you won't regret it. Uh, next up, uh, another thing that's almost always open on my screen is uh, a file manager. Uh, my personal favorite is uh, Ranger. Uh, this is a command line file manager. It uses Vim keys uh, and it actually takes the uh, Vim stuff pretty seriously. Um, a lot of the Vim commands that you're used to using, you can uh, copy over, which seems surprising to me mildly. Um, you know, just as an example here, I've got a downloads page, got a couple of images in here. Uh, you know, let's say I want to move this to a new folder, this image right here. Well, how would you do that in Vim? You would probably like, you could either do YY to copy it, right? And then you could copy it over to your desktop and now you got a copy of it. Or you could do, uh, you know, D, D. Mega doo doo. To delete it. And you can see here, it actually shows you, you can do a D lowercase D to cut. So like cut and paste, or you could do a D capital D to just delete it. Like it's a little bit different than using Vim, but if you're used to using Vim, I think this is a great option. These command line file managers are great. There's nothing wrong with GUI file managers. Of course, I'm a big fan of Thunar as far as um, file managers go. But what a file manager I think is really helpful for is sort of viewing files in their totality. If you already know what files you're looking for and you just want to manipulate them, you want to rename them, move them around, delete them, edit them, whatever, there's no reason I would ever open up a file manager. If I just want to, you know, edit a file, honestly, I've got a fuzzy finder built into Vim and I can find anything I want. It's pretty rare that I actually use a file manager, but for the times that I do want to use it, basically browsing files, this is freaking awesome. This is my preferred way to do it. I don't have to leave the command line to go open up a GUI yeah, it's super convenient. It's right here. I don't even have to take my hands off the keyboard. Get yourself a command line file manager. You'll be happy it did. Okay, next stop, Vim. And I think everybody knows about Vim. Uh, Vim is probably the reason that I have this YouTube channel right now. It's uh, freaking awesome. It's a uh, command line text editor. One of the better ones out there. Probably the best one out there. Mainly because of the key bindings. Uh, if you haven't used Vim before, there's a whole lot of videos about Vim. I have a whole lot of videos about Vim. Probably now would be a good time to put cards up there if I remember to do it. But essentially, the same way that you can edit code with VS Code or, or any sort of markdown editing app, you can edit on the command line. It, it feels almost stupid to talk about it because it's it's so powerful people know what vim is if you're into linux if you're into the command line at all you know what vim is even if you don't use it but you know how could you make a list of top five linux apps without vim being on it i guess in particular what vim is really really good at is manipulating text obviously the thing that i've said before is that your typing speed you know, the words per minute you type is never gonna get faster no matter what app you use. So what makes a text editor good is the speed at which you can manipulate text, the efficiency at which you can manipulate text. And in terms of writing text, since your hands are already on the keyboard, how much can you do without ever having to leave and touch the mouse? And as far as that's concerned, Vim is about as good as you're ever gonna get. So check out Vim, you'll be happy you did. Uh, let's take a look at Flameshot. This is a really cool little app. What this is, is a uh, screenshot utility, is what I would call it. Um, there's a lot of different ways to take screenshots on Linux and a lot of different ways to do it from the command line. I think probably the most popular is an app called Scrot, which literally you run Scrot, takes a screenshot. Don't have it installed right now, but it screenshots the whole screen. Uh, I think it saves it in whatever directory you run the command from. That's nice. But Flameshot is cool because it, it does have a GUI app. I can sort of highlight parts of the screen. I can add text in here. I can annotate screenshots, all that kind of thing. It, it gets as advanced as other screenshot apps want to get. But as well as doing that, it also is a command line app and functions like a command line app. So you can run <laughs> Flameshot from the command line. So, you know, if you wanted to, let's say, a screenshot on a particular screen. One of my favorite ways to do is you could do flame shot screen dash P and then you just have to give it a location. So I'll put it in my downloads. And uh, what that'll do is it will literally just, if I come to my downloads, take a screenshot of whatever screen I'm on and save it straight to my downloads. It's super easy. Uh, what I usually do with flame shot is if I take a look in here in my config slash polybar slash modules and I find my uh, flame shot module, uh, you can see I have basically two things set up a click left and a click right uh, whenever I left click is going to screenshot my screen and save it in the downloads, whatever screen I hit it on. Uh, my poly bar up here is displayed on all three of my displays. So whatever screen I click that icon on, it will save that screenshot of that screen to my downloads. And of course, if I just right click, it opens up the GUI app where I can immediately draw and select whatever uh, screen I want. I'll have options to annotate, options to add text, all sorts of crazy stuff like that. And of course that leads into the fifth app on the list, probably the most predictable app of all, but of course, Polybar, which might be my favorite app I've ever encountered. Uh, I love 
using Polybar. It's very, very simple and it runs on basically everything I've tried. I've even managed to get Polybar working on like Budgie, which wasn't very hard to do actually. I haven't tried to run it on like GNOME or KDE or anything, but I assume that would be very easy to do as well. Basically because the way that Polybar works, if we go into my config slash Polybar, is it works based off of scripts, basic little shell scripts. Um, if I look at the actual config, it's very sort of simple. It's straightforward. Even if you haven't ever used the app, you can sort of very quickly figure out what the controls are. It doesn't take you long. You can figure out what happens if maybe you don't want the width at 100%. Maybe you want to put it at, uh, let's say, uh, 90%. You can probably pretty easily figure out what that'll happen. I might have to like kill Polybar and restart it for that to uh, take place. But you can see, oh, hey, now it's only at 90% instead of 100%. It's very, very easy to manipulate. That's probably, uh, well, that's definitely the best thing about it is it's incredibly easy to manipulate it's it doesn't take really i mean like there are tutorials you can look up and i've made plenty of videos about it but you you don't really need them that's the great thing about it the ease of use factor what in particular makes polybar great if if i go into my actual modules file is the ability to pipe in your own code. Um, there are a lot of examples of this where I've built my own modules. I have multiple videos about building my own modules for Polybar because it's very cool. It's to the point that like almost everything on my Polybar other than the date and uh, this volume module, which is basically the default volume module, is something that I built myself. I've got a module that I built to change the wallpaper based on uh, which button I'm clicking, whether I'm uh, right clicking, middle clicking, left clicking, it'll pull from different repositories of wallpapers. I've got a script up here to display my host name. I've got a script to display disk usage. And all of these were super easy to write because you can basically just pipe the same commands you would use on the command line straight into Polybar. If that's not good enough for you, you can look right here like I've done and literally just create a shell script and have that script run at some interval and then print information onto the polybar. It's very easy. It, it like it takes inputs from everywhere. You can uh, run Python scripts through Polybar. You can run shell scripts through Polybar. Almost anything will work with Polybar and Polybar will run on literally anything. It's not always as well supported on everything. You know, for example, I'm using the awesome window manager. It doesn't like work with tags as well as it does on other window managers, but it's freaking Polybar. Works everywhere. Check out Polybar. You'll be happy it did. And that brings us to the close of this video. My top five apps for Linux. Thank you for watching everybody. I'll see you in the next one.